All right, today I'm out looking for some brook trout under the ice. Some lovely sleet and snow today. So we'll see if that affects the bite, having the pressure falling like that. But the first lure I'm going to reach for a lot of times is going to be a little spoon, either a Castmaster or Swedish Pimple. Something that's going to put out a lot of noise, hopefully draw some fish in. You can tip that with plastics or bait or you don't even have to run either. They're rarely really regressive. We'll give this hole a few minutes and see if we can pull the fish in. You can also pound them on the bottom a little bit, stir things up. Yeah, it really kicks up a lot of debris. Jeez, that guy came in beaming in to get that thing. That's a big hen. Nice. <laughs> he came slashing in. Those brookies always really go aggressive on spoons like that. That's crazy. There we go. Look at the size of that. She hammered that little gold cast master. I like these cast masters about 1 16th. 132nd ounce. That was awesome. What a violent hit that was. All right, let's get this beautiful hen brookie. There's the cast master she went after. She goes back under the ice. So I just tipped this with a little bit of millworm and uh, she hammered it. All right, let's go to my second lure choice, which is going to be a simple tungsten jig. You can use lead head jigs too. Or tin. I just like tungsten because it's a little bit heavier, punches down through this slush a little bit like I'm getting today with this sleet and snow. So it's, uh, it's easier to detect the bite and uh, it's also you don't have to bring your gear up as often to clear the, the slush hole because you can punch through the slush a little bit. So let's get this ball jig down there, see if we can't uh, so I've got a little bit of plastics on there to add some action and a single tiny millworm just to kick up the protein a bit. That way if they come in they can chew on it and taste that. These also work really well just dead sticked. I've I found that um, just hanging that small presentation a few feet off the bottom where I, I tend to find brookies in tight association with the bottom. Um, you can just hang it there sometimes and they'll just cruise by and start chewing on it. So if you want to run two rods, you can jig with a spoon on one and run a dead stick um, tungsten. I tend to prefer uh, oranges and purples for brook trout. Just seems to be my most productive colors for them. I'm actually going to let this dead stick here for just a sec while I rig up my next rod. A lot of times this will, this is when I'll get bit is when I'm just letting it dead stick right there, like that. And other days they have to have the action. It's just how it goes. That's fishing, right? Not every day is the same. Now just like the cast masters, one of the benefits of tungsten, of course, is its increased density. So they're heavier for their small size. And you can pound them on the bottom too and uh, stir things up a little bit. They don't do as quite a good a job as stirring things up as the spoons do, but they do have a little bit of weight, so you can pound it in the sediment a little bit sometimes. Fish can sense that on their lateral line. Well, I've been jigging with the tungsten for like 10 minutes. I haven't even seen a fish. Um, seems like the fish are really scattered right now. So instead of getting up and drilling a hole and moving camera and everything, I'm going to try a little experiment here. And I'm going to switch up to a little ultralight rip and wrap. And this has rattles in it. I'm going to see if that those rattles will help draw some fish in from a distance. And uh, we can hopefully get a fish without having to move and re-drill holes and do all that. So, let's try this. At least give it five minutes with the uh, ultralight rip and wrap. 
It has a great action as it kind of darts from side to side in different directions. <laughs> Did you see that? Oh, dude, look at that big gnarly buff. <laughs> that worked. Called him in. Uh, it was cool seeing him come in and smash that rip and wrap. I mean, I'm going to do a replay of that because he came in and just hammered it. I think they do respond to those rattles. I've noticed that with these big brook trout. They'll uh, respond to noise. So if you're having trouble calling in fish, try the old rip and wrap. Now, sometimes that commotion can draw in fish from afar. So I'm going to toss that tungsten jig back down there. See if it can draw in somebody real quick. Okay, I'm going to dead stick that a few feet off the bottom while I tie up my next rod. Today they've been scattered so the the lures that are working best are those lures that have a lot of action and flash and noise and draw fish in from afar and brook trout tend to be pretty aggressive compared to some other species of trout especially under the ice There he is, got him. See, just dead sticking that down there. That looks like a big butt. He just came cruising in from a distance. Oh, big, big butt. <laughs> Holy cow. Gotta be. All right, buddy. Don't get me all wet. Wow, that is a monster, monster fish. Look at the size of that thing. That thing is huge. You hit that uh, jig with the purple plastic on there. What a beautiful fish, monster buck. All right, that's tungsten jig. Like I said, sometimes just letting it hang there. It's just as effective as just uh, jigging it. Okay, we're gonna switch back up to a high action lure. And this is an Acme Hyperglide. It's a very cool little lure that uh, I had this one I had custom painted by this guy named Dave. He has a lure painting company called Dave's Danglers. It's got a YouTube channel too. I'll put a link to it now. Anyways, uh, these are a cool little fish mimic lure. And these wings, they come out on the side and they flex out. So I'll show you that before I drop it down in the hole here. You can see here's the lure, but then when I drop it in the water, you see how the wings come out and they flutter? Isn't that cool? Nice little flash. And it, see how you can make really cool action just by just gently fluttering it. But we'll, we'll give this one a try. I bet we'll have some success if we can get a fish to come by. And of course they glide too really nice because of that those wings they have a really unique action to kind of go side to side they can really work and swim Nice, go ahead. See her come back for it a couple times there. She just couldn't resist those little flapping wings on that thing. All right, so there's the lure. There's the fish. Let's get her going. See you later. Okay, and last but not least in my top five ice fishing brook trout lures is gonna be tube jigs. 
They really do set themselves apart from other jigs, um, especially like tungsten. Because of that horizontal tie-in position, um, and they're generally lead head, they fall so much slower. You can see the action is very different because you're tying in in the midpoint of the jig. So it falls slower. And they also tend to give you a little bit more of a sort of twirl at the top of the of the jig cadence. You see as I jig it, the head turns different directions. But then they also have that little skirt that you can just twitch like this. And it gives it a really nice action. They are also exceedingly cheap, <laughs> like less than a quarter for the jig head and the plastics. And they come in an infinite variety of colors, so you can really dial it into you, uh, the confidence colors that you uh, enjoy fishing for brook trout. It just looks like a little tiny bait fish. For such a cheap lure, it's uh, incredibly effective. You can see it kind of glides a little bit. The longer you let it glide, it'll go different directions. And uh, it'll, it can be really, really effective I, for all species of trout. It's just, uh, just one of those lures that can just catch just about everything that lives in the water. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that was crazy aggressive. There you go. Get back underneath the ice. Oh, I don't want to shower. <laughs> that was that was the best hit of the day. God, that was crazy. All right, we got gotcha. you. Another big, big hen today. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's top five ice fishing lures for brook trout. I'll put links to all of the lures I used in the video below, as well as links to Dave's Dangler. She does some custom painting on hard baits. He does really cool work. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys. Ooh, there's another one down there right now. Oh, there's two of them down there. Three of them down there. Well, I gotta catch one more. They're just like scrounging around down there. Might as well catch more. They're here. Got him. <laughs> the one in the back took it. That was great. Oh, another hen. That one didn't even have any bait on it. And there's a whole bunch of them just came in because that hen spurted some eggs as she came up through the hole. So I'm going to drop this uh, hyperglide down there, see if we can't uh, get her to take it. There, they're chasing it, chasing it. Oh, look at how aggressive that is. <laughs> Almost had him. I flutter it. Come on. She's chowing on those uh, eggs on the bottom. Doesn't see the hyperglide. There you guys sees it now. Come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> oh man, that was so cool. It's a big fish. That was awesome. Wow, that's a big fish. Not quite ready to come up yet. All right, we'll do it at the hole release here with the hyperglide fish.
to you later. Uh, I think that's the end of that awesome run. <laughs> I was going to cut the video short, but I looked down at the camera. There was a bunch of fish rooting around there and some of the eggs that hen had spurted on her way up through the home. So I figured might as well get some more fish. All right, guys. See you next time. And just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye.